If you've got limited space in your home and you've got a restricted doorway and you can't make use of a normal door, then a sliding door may be the solution for you. Also nowadays, sliding barn doors seems to be a popular rage. It gives you that warm, cozy farmhouse feel. What I like about these kits from builders, the door, the track, the rail, all the fittings, it all comes in one kit and it really is easy to install. I'm gonna take you through all the steps to show you how you can do this yourself. Let's get started. As for the tools that you're going to need, you're gonna be using a hammer drill, 10 and six millimeter masonry drill bits, a posi screwdriver or driver bit, pencil on a tape measure, and a spirit level. So the first step is to mount our rail into position above the doorway. What height do you go for? Well, it's all been worked out for you. You need a five millimeter clearance on the bottom side, plus the height of your door, plus an additional 39 millimeters at the top, which is the clearance between the rail and the door. Now my door height is 2.1 meters, so I've got five plus 2.1 meters plus 39 mils. That works out to be 2.144 meters. So that's gonna be the measurement from the ground to that first position of my mounting hole. As for horizontal, I've got a 1.8 meter length of bar here, and I'll measure out halfway of that rail, which is 900 mils. Line it up, and then hold that into position from the inside edge of the opening. So that's gonna be the position of my first hole. With the first mounting position marked, now slide your rail up so that it marks in the center of the hole. Make sure that the hole is on the lower side of the rail. So if it's the other way around, just flip it over. Once you hold up into position, then you can look at your spirit level to make sure that you have got it level. And now you can mark the position of your other holes. Now this can be difficult on your own, get somebody to help you if you can. Now with our masonry drill, drill your holes for your screws to mount the top rail. I like to take a little piece of paper and kind of make like an envelope catchment little pocket. It just captures all that dust, stops making a mess all over the floor. I'm using the 10 millimeter drill bit to drill the holes. That's your first hole drilled. Take your 10 millimeter wall plug and then just knock it into position. You may have to give it a bit of a tap with a hammer, but it should go in. Now exactly the same process for the rest of the holes. All our four holes are drilled to accommodate our rail. Now drill them quite deep to accommodate the M8 coach screw. It's got extra length to accommodate an architrave around the door frame if you do have one. If you do have that, you're gonna to need to add in an additional space on this side to ensure that you pull that rail out the additional distance of the architrave. Now when it comes to installing the rail, make sure the hole is on the downside of the rail. Pop in your coach screw, followed by your spacer, and then you can line that up into position, and then you can take a 13 millimeter spanner to tighten it. You can make use of a shifting spanner if you like. Now before that final tighten, leave that loose, and then we get all the other screws into position. It gives us a little bit of play, and then we can tighten them all up. Okay, once you've got all four, now you can give that little extra tighten to take up that slack. We're now gonna fit our track roller to the door. Now it's already been worked out for you. You need 120 millimeters from the top edge of the door to the bottom edge of the bracket. As for the horizontal distance, well, between 50 and 150 millimeters. I like to make sure it's in the main style of the door as this is the strongest part of the door. I'd rather all the loading went through that section instead of the top panel. So I'm gonna go in about 50 millimeters offset from the side and 120 millimeters from the top down to that stopping point. And that's gonna be the position of my first bracket. Holding that in place with the screws provided, I'm gonna drive them all the way through to secure it to the door. And then exactly the same dimensions on the other side of the door. Right, that's our door into position. Slide it over, so easy to move across. We move it all the way to its fully open position and then we're gonna pop in the guide rail on the underside and that'll just stop that door from swinging and keep it in its central position. So we're gonna go slightly past our fully open position Make sure it doesn't come off the rail. And then take your guide, line it up with the edge of the door opening. And once that door stops swinging, that's its natural position, perfectly balanced. That's where you wanna mark the position of where to drill your holes. Then we're gonna be using a six mil masonry bit, drilling into the floor, pop in your wall plugs, line up your guide, and screw it into position. Bring your door back and slide it through. Now that guide stops that door from swinging and keeps it firm in place. Perfect. With that door securely in place, now close the door completely. 
And now we're gonna make use of our stoppers. They're gonna go on the end here. And this is gonna stop this door from going all the way over off the edge of the rail. Line up your stopper at the top edge of the door and then just mark those three holes and that's where you're gonna drill with the six millimeter masonry bit, followed by the anchor plugs and then screw the bracket into position. In the open position, I like to make it flush with the door opening edge, that way maximizing the space of the doorway. Wow, this DIY has turned out awesome. I absolutely love it. This was an area which couldn't accommodate a door. Who would have thought a sliding barn door would look so good in this area? It's perfect, it looks great, and it's effective, it does the job. You can even add a handle if you want to. Not to mention how easy that was to do. We drilled a few holes at the top for the rail, we attached the brackets to the door, we mounted the slide guide at the bottom, and then we mounted the stoppers on either end of the rail. Simple and easy steps to do. There's no reason why you can't install this yourself. Remember, everything is available at your local builder's outlet. If you enjoyed this clip, like it, share it. You can also subscribe to the Builders Fan YouTube channel. There's a range of product reviews, how-tos, and DIYs just like this for you to be inspired, get to builders, and get it done.